are now joined by the niece of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Alveda King is here on maybe what her uncle would think of the protest and certainly what she thinks of it. What did you make of this? Colin Kaepernick, the football player, refusing to stand for the national anthem. I believe that since Colin chose to demonstrate nonviolently and peacefully, that is something that should be acknowledged. Hmm. I don't know why he picked this moment in history to make this statement through a peaceful protest. It was very jarring. Uh, it was very disturbing to so many who love America because one of the few times that Americans come together in unity is during the singing of the national anthem. I sing the national anthem, and when I do so, it's with prayer that God God will bless us and help us help America, you know? Yeah. So I know that he had a purpose for doing that. And I know that people are very, very upset. I believe that we should be praying and those of us who have a voice to show Colin what's still good about America and then just work to make America better. Now, if someone feels in a similar way to the way he feels, thinks that maybe like police brutality is an issue that uh, needs to be brought to the forefront, which is one of the things that he's talked about, what would be a better way of going about it because you're right many people have brought up the fact that the national anthem maybe wasn't the place for this what is a place for something like this he used his moment and he stepped into it and he embraced it he owned it I believe though when he says America is racist as one who lived in the 20th century I marched with my dad Reverend A.D. King I attended rallies with my uncle Martin Luther King Jr. Mm -hmm. I marched and went to jail for causes so America is not racist there is racism in America so he has given us the conversation he's put it straight right. into our face and now we have to respond and show him that America can be better. You disagree, but you see the way that he uh, went about it, at least being in a peaceful way, as being uh, something that's admirable. So that's interesting. I, um, yeah. I do want to talk to you a little bit about the politics of the day as well, and particularly Donald Trump. I mean, he continues to try to court uh, minority voters, something that's been a theme here the last few days. Here's a tweet uh, from Mr. Trump from this morning. Now that African Americans are seeing what a bad job Hillary type policy and management has done for the inner city inner cities they want Trump now he was criticized over the weekend for another tweet about the uh, cousin of Dwayne Wade who was shot and killed and he said again at the end of that tweet something similar voters in the African American community will go for Trump what have you made of all this well, I want to take a quick second to say people have said that I have endorsed Mr. Trump. I don't endorse candidates anymore. I, the last candidate I endorsed was in 2007. Okay. So I pray for all the candidates and I vote pro-life. I want to clear that up. But I believe that Mr. Trump has said something very significant. He dared to step out of some boundaries and to say to African Americans, vote for me. I care about your vote. Sometimes the Democrats take African Americans for granted and sometimes the Republicans don't pay very much attention to the African-American voice of vote at all. Right. So I think that's very unique, and I believe that going into these inner cities is going to cause us which to take doing, another right? look well, at what's happening. Well, he's going to make yeah. this speech. Would you think, I'm, you yeah. think it's a good idea Saturday in Detroit? I believe it's good to go there. I've been to Detroit myself, and it's so suppressed and oppressed. Right. Detroit, all the inner cities need help, and if Mr. Trump can help, let him go to Detroit. Okay, Dr. King, it's a um, pleasure to speak with you, and um, thanks very much Thank for joining you. us today. Uh